Hello? Yes, Hawkins, where are you? What? Well, you should have checked the times of the trains. I've had to get my own supper for the third time running. Yes, yes, I dare say, but you know how helpless I am without you and Mrs. H. Man cannot live on baked beans alone, you know. All right, all right, tomorrow morning. But first thing, mind you. Oh, good heavens, there's a doorbell, you know. Yes? Mr. Wake. Yes? I'm Detective Inspector Doppler, sir. Wiltshire Police. I'm sorry to be calling so late. I just have some questions, if you don't mind. I'm just having my dinner. It shan't take long, sir. Very well. Come in. Always a pleasure to welcome the police into one's home. And a fine home it is, sir. Quite eccentric, if you don't mind me saying. Well, not at all. Could I get you a drink? A brandy, perhaps? I'm on duty, I'm afraid. But you're welcome to have one yourself. Well, I, I certainly shall. So, what can I do for you, Inspector? I'm investigating a disappearance, sir. Disappearance? Yes, sir. Of a Mr. Milo Tyndall. Do you know him, sir? Tyndall? Oh, yes, that's the chap who's taken Laundry Cottage, isn't it? He walked out of his cottage on Friday night and hasn't been seen since. Great Scott. Did you know Mr. Tyndall well, sir? Vaguely. He came to my house once or twice, sir. <laughs> Forgive me, Inspector, but I'm unsure how I can help you. When did you last see Mr. Tyndall, sir? Oh, months ago. I can't exactly remember. As I told you, he wasn't a close friend. Rather more an acquaintance. Really, sir? Well, it doesn't matter what we've been informed. Jack Ben, the owner of the White Lion pub, said he mentioned about coming to visit you two nights ago. You can't trust the words of a pub owner, Inspector. Vinous gossip is their trade. As for Mr. Ben, his observations are as accurate as the utterings of the drunkards he serves. I'm often correcting him. I see. Well, in that case, I wonder if you could correct something else for me. What's that? A man who passed by this house two nights ago claimed that a fierce struggle was taking place in here. <laughs> well, does it look like there was? If there was, it's been cleaned up well. But they also claim shots were fired in the property. Shots? Three shots, he claims. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. Unless a car backed fired nearby. No, sir. These were shots from a gun. Our man is positive. May I ask why you took two days to call round and ask me about all this? Well, sir, things take longer to check out than you think. We'd like to be certain of our facts before troubling a gentleman like yourself. Facts? What facts? Well, <clears throat> after our witness reported the incident, we did some checking with the village. And as I say, Mr. Ben was very helpful. Oh, uh, really? He told us that Mr. Tyndall popped into the pub Friday evening and said he was on his way up to see you. Well, what with him being a newcomer to these parts and all, we thought we'd better have a word with him and see if he could throw any light on the subject. But, as I previously indicated, he seems to have disappeared, sir. And what's that got to do with me? He wasn't at his cottage all of Sunday, nor all today. We made many attempts to contact him. By Jove, Mary Jew would have been proud of you. Now, Inspector, if that is all you have to say... When we stepped inside Mr. Tyndall's cottage to ensure he'd not come to harm, we found this note. Urgent, we talk. Come Friday night at 8 o'clock. Wake. This is your handwriting, isn't it, sir? So Mr. Tyndall was here. Yes. Now, 
if you wouldn't mind answering my original question, please, sir. Was there a struggle here two nights ago? In a manner of speaking, yes. It, it was a game we were playing. A game? What kind of game? It's rather difficult to explain. It's, it's called burglary. Burglary? Look, isn't it about the time you told me I don't know the seriousness of my own position? A man comes here. There's a fight. Shots are heard. He disappears. What would you make of that if you were me? An open and shut case. But things are not always what they seem, Inspector. In the case of the drowned dummy, my man married you, once proved by a phonetic misspelling the forgery of a document allegedly written by a deaf mute. I am waiting for an explanation, Mr. Wake. Oh, all right. Tindo arrived at eight and left about an hour and a half later. I haven't seen him since. And nor has anyone else, sir. But this is absurd. Are you suggesting that I killed Tyndall? I never mentioned kill, Mr. Wake. Oh, really? You can't pull that one on me. Garroted, sir? Might I ask how you knew that her ladyship was garroted? Surely you told me so, Inspector. No, sir. I never mentioned it. <laughs> I'm sorry you find the situation so amusing, sir. I know, I know. You're just doing your job, aren't you? Isn't that the overworked phrase? Possibly, sir. After all, it would be remiss of me not to ask, given your wife and Mr. Tyndall have been associating closely for some time. Oh, so you know about that, do you? Well, I'm not surprised. You can't keep anything quiet in a small village. Well? You aren't suggesting a crime of passion, I hope, Inspector. Not over Marguerite. It'd be like knifing somebody for an Audi bottle of white blancmange. I'm very partial to Blamange, sir. I find it a great standby. So, all of you had either means, motive, or opportunity, said Inspector Doppler, as he thoughtfully digested another spoonful of his favourite pud. But only one of you had all three. Exactly so. Now, might I know the truth of what happened? Do you mind if I have another drink? If it'll help. Yes, as you know, Tyndall was having an affair with my wife. Now, I'm one of that rare breed of men who generally doesn't mind losing gracefully to a gent who's playing by the same rules. But to be worsted by a playboy charmer who mistakes my boredom for impotence and my provocative energy for narcissism is too much. It's like starting every game love 30 down and the umpire against you. You mean you can bring yourself to accept the situation? Is that what you're saying? I think what infuriated me most was the things he said about me. That th things that Marguerite repeated to me. What sort of things? Oh, you know, smarmy, deceitful things which any lover can make about any husband. It's just too easy for them with a captive audience groggy on rediscovered youth and penis envy. It's not really playing the game. You regard marriage as a game? Not marriage, Inspector. Sex. Sex is the game with marriage as a penalty. Round the board we go towards each futile anniversary. Pass, go, collect 200 rows, 200 silence, 200 scars in deep places. Besides, I seek my adventure with a delightful woman from Finlandia. Right. So, you're saying that due to your indifference to your wife, you had no motive for killing Mr. Tyndall? Absolutely. Tyndall is no concern to me in that regard. But you invited him here to what? Play a game? I wanted to teach him a lesson. Not to kill him, no, but punish him. In a curious way, some of his remarks which Marguerite repeated to me led me to believe he was worth taking a little trouble with. Perhaps even worth getting to know. Now, the shortest way to a man's heart is humiliation. You soon find out what he's made of. So you invited him here and humiliated him? I did. I took a leaf out of the book of certain 18th century secret societies. 
they knew to a nicety how to determine whether someone was worthy to be included amongst their number, and also how to humiliate him in the process. Like a bullying initiation ceremony. Exactly. When Count Calistro, the noted magician, sought admission to one such society, he was asked whether he was prepared to die for it, if need be. He placed a pistol with just powder and no bullet to his head, and... bang! And you did this to Mr. Tyndall? More or less. I invited Milo here and suggested to him that, as my wife had expensive tastes and he was virtually a pauper, the only course open for him was to steal some valuable jewels which I had in the safe. And he agreed to this? Oh, yes. I persuaded him to get out of his clothes and dress as a clown for my various costumes, and then, in disguise, break into this house, blow up the safe, and pocket the jewels. He was under the impression that this was an insurance scam. However, as Milo turned to make off with the jewels, I turned nasty and revealed the purpose of the evening. That you set him up as a burglar, giving you reason to defend yourself by shooting him. And how did Mr. Tyndall react to this? It was electrifying. He swallowed my story hook, line and sinker. He fell on his knees, pleaded for his life, but I was implacable. I put the gun against his head and shot him with a blank cartridge. He fainted dead away. It was most gratifying. Gratifying or not, sir, Mr. Tyndall may have been put in fear for his life. Such action invites a grave charge of assault. Well, it's better than the murder charge you were insinuating a few minutes ago. I'm still contemplating it. Sir. Oh, come now, Inspector. I've told you what happened. After a few minutes, Tyndall recovered his senses, realised he wasn't dead after all, and went off home. Just like that? Well, he needed a glass or two of cognac. I mean, wouldn't you? I doubt whether I would have survived completely undamaged, sir. The whole thing sounds like the most irresponsible trick. Irresponsible? It was quite the contrary. It was upholding the sanctity of marriage. That's more than most people are prepared to do these days. Tell me, did Mr. Tyndall say anything when he left? No, he seemed speechless. <laughs> he just lurched off. <laughs> I'm sorry you appear to find all this so funny, Mr. Wake. My officers and I may not take the same attitude. Look, why don't you see this from my point of view? In a sense, Milo was a burglar. He was stealing my wife. So you tortured him? It was a game! A bloody game! Sounds rather sad, sir. Like a child not wanting to grow up. What's so sad about a child playing, eh? Nothing. If you're a child. Let me tell you, Inspector. I have played games of such complexity that Einstein would have been honoured to have been asked to participate in them. Games of construction and games of destruction. Games of hazard, logic... Inductive logic, semantics, color association, mathematics, hypnosis, and prestigitation. I have achieved leaps of the mind and leaps of the psyche unknown in ordinary human relationships. And I've had a great till of not wholly innocent fun. And now, sir, you've achieved murder. No! I believe so, sir. You can't be serious. Tyndall left perfectly breathing. In that case... You wouldn't mind if I looked around, would you, sir? Go ahead. Crawl around on the floor, hands and knees. Get out your plastic wallets and imprison random fibres or hairs. Gather your blunt instruments while you may. Look, if I wanted to conceal, let alone kill Milo, where would I put him? In the cellar? Behind the walls? Maybe in the furnace, perhaps? These holes in the wall... Look like bullet holes to me, sir. Quite right, Inspector. So they are. You told me you used blank rounds. Well, I had to use two live bullets to set up the trick. One blank to complete it. I had to persuade Tyndall I was in earnest. After all, there's really no point in playing a game unless you play it to the hilt. You have a permit for that weapon, I hope. It's private property, Inspector. I often have pests on the grounds, if you should know. I see. So, to get this right, 
You fire us two life shots and only one blank. I'd like you to show me exactly where Mr. Tyndall was when you killed him. Pretended to kill him. Show me, please, exactly where he was when you shot him. You do realize, of course, it wasn't a real bullet. Mr. Wake. All right, it was up here on the landing. He was standing, kneeling, crouching about here. And he fainted and fell down the stairs. I see. Uh, about here, you see. Were you close to Mr. Tyndall when you fired the gun? Oh, yes, very. I was standing over him, in fact, with the gun pressed against his head. The actual feel of the gun, coupled with the noise of the explosion, was what done the trick. And I suppose it's a joke blood, too. Joke blood? I'm not quite sure I followed, Inspector. This here on the banisters? It's dried blood. Blood? Where? Here, in the angle of the banister. And there's some more. Also looks like someone has been rubbing at the carpet. An intensive clean. Just missed some areas. You get to explain, sir? I, I have no idea. Milo, uh... He was a little burnt. Y you must believe me. Why should I, sir? I've got the facts out in front of me. But it's impossible. It, it was only a game. A game? With real bullets and real blood? <laughs> There's a hole cut in the pane of the glass with the diamond cutter. And, and there, there are the marks of the ladder still outside. And if you look down, you'll see the imprint of the other end of the ladder. And of size 28 shoes or whatever they were. Still in the flower bed, see? And this is the bureau that he broke open. Thank you, Mr. Wake. But I don't require a tour. I've seen all I need here. I'm just pointing out facts which would help substantiate my story. And that's the safe we blew open. And where are the jewels now, sir? I, I put them in the bank yesterday. I thought they would be safer in there. I mean, anyone could break in and steal them. Really? And look down the corridor. You'll, you'll see the dressing up basket. You didn't point out that mound of earth in the garden, did you, sir? Mound of earth? What mound of earth? Over there, by the far wall, in the shadow of that tree. Looks freshly dug, sir. Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it's probably the gardener's doing. A, a new flower bed. A flower bed under a tree? Oh, so you're a horticulturalist as well as an inspector. It's a hobby, Mr. Wake. Just doesn't involve killing anyone. Inspector, I've had just about enough of this farce. Go and dig the damned thing up if you want to. Oh, we shall. Don't worry. Look, do you really think that I'd bury Tyndall in the garden and leave all that newly turned earth for everyone to find? If you weren't expecting us, sir, yes. In a couple of weeks, with some bulbs or a little grass seed, it would be difficult to tell if it had ever been disturbed. But in my job, it'd be amiss not to be suspicious of a killer's garden. I did not kill him! We'll see. What a way to keep your clothes. Completely out of keep with the tightness of everything else. Oh. Nice shirt, too. Doesn't look your size. I wasn't always this size. It's a nice old shirt of mine. I hope to refit it someday. Uh-huh. And looks like a receipt in the pocket. Looks like for half pint at the White Lion. Date you two nights ago at 7.03 p.m. Let me see that. Didn't you tell me that Mr. Tyndall stripped off here the other night before disguising himself as a clown? Yes, that's right. But, but he changed back before he left. I mean, you can't see him walking through the village as a clown, can you? No, sir. I can't. Which makes the appearance of his clothes here all the more significant. It's all so difficult. On the contrary, Mr. Wake. I think it's all very simple. 
I think you started this as a game, exactly as you say you did, in order to play a diabolical trick on Mr. Tyndall. But it went wrong. The third shot was not a blank as you'd supposed, but was in fact a live bullet that killed Mr. Tyndall stone dead, splattering his blood on the banisters in the process. When you realised what you'd done, you panicked and simply buried him in the garden. You covered your tracks by cleaning the carpets as best you could, but not enough to remove it all from the banisters. And very amateur not to destroy his clothes. I swear Tyndall left here alive. I don't believe he did. I didn't murder him. I accept that. As I said, I think it happened by accident. You're looking at a charge of manslaughter. I did not kill him. He, he left here alive. Andrew Wake, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder of Milo Tyndall. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. Look, there's one way of settling this. If you think he's in the garden, go and bloody dig him up. The evidence they found already provides enough grounds to prosecute. Even if the body isn't under that turned earth in the garden, it will merely go to indicate he may have been moved. After all, you like to play games, don't you, Mr. Wake? Perhaps you suspected we would check there. Now you can either come with me quietly, or I will cuff you. No! <laughs> Let me go! I, I didn't do anything! I, yeah. I demand to speak to my solicitor! You'll have that chance at the station, sir. Besides, you're likely to only face seven years. Seven years? Seven years to regret playing silly games that go wrong. It didn't go wrong! It went bloody right! You've set me up! You see... We real-life officers aren't as stupid as we are sometimes portrayed by writers like yourself. We may not have our pipes, watch at houses, shovel hats or deer stalkers, but we tend to be reasonably effective for all of that. Who the hell are you? Detective Inspector Doppler, sir. Funny name, Doppler. Like the German name Doppelganger, or double image. And of course... For those whose minds run to these things, it is virtually an anagram of the word plodder. So, Inspector Plodder becomes Inspector Doppler, if you see what I mean. Milo. The same. You shit. You utter bastard, Milo. Oh, thank you. Mind you, I'm not saying it wasn't well done. It was brilliant. Thank you. It took me a while with the makeup, but it appears to be worth it. Well, I just wash. Oh, of course, just down the corridor and to the left. Would you like a drink, my dear fellow? You know what I like. Well, I must say, Milo, I congratulate you. It was first class. <laughs> you really had been going there for a moment. For a moment? For a long moment, I concede. Of course, I had my suspicions towards the end. Did you now? So, what did you think of my performance, the... The anguish of an innocent man trapped by circumstantial evidence. Undignified, if it was a performance. Cheers. Oh, of course it was a performance. It had to be undignified to be convincing. As I say, I had my suspicions. Really? How cleverly you kept them to yourself. Thank you for looking after my clothes for me. I suppose you slipped in here when I popped out to the bank yesterday. Yes. I waited to see you leave. Thankfully, you hadn't seen to the upstairs window since. Yes, the housekeeper is away at the moment. And the blood on the banister? Oh, yes. I have a friend in the theatre. Kindly lent me some. Rather convincing, I thought. Very. You executed it perfectly, dear boy. I loved your Inspector Doppler. I'm glad you liked that, sir. <laughs> Truly remarkable. You know, 
<sighs> I haven't congratulated you on your game yet. Rather genius. Did you think so? Oh, good, good. I must say I was rather delighted with it myself. Tell me, did you really think that your last moment on Earth had come? Yes. You're not angry, are you? Should I be? Well, I just wanted to get to know you, to see if you were, as I suspected, my sort of person. A games-playing sort of person? Exactly. And am I? Most certainly. There's no doubt about it. And what exactly is a games-playing person? He's the complete man. A man of reason and imagination, of potent passions and bright fancies. He's joyous and unrepenting. His weapons are the openness of a child and the cunning of a pike. And with them he faces out the black terrors of life. For me personally, he is a man who dares to live his life without the crutch of domestic tension. You see, at bottom, I'm a rather solitary man. An arrangement of the clouds, the secret mystery of landscape, a game of intrigue and revelation mean more to me than people, even the ones I'm supposed to be in love with. I've never met a woman to whom the claims of intellect were as absolute as they are to me. For a long time, I was reticent about all this, knowing that most people would mistake my adroit heart for one of polished stone. But it doesn't worry me any longer. I'm out in the open. I've turned my whole life into one great work of happy invention. And you think I'm like this? Yes, I do. You're wrong. I'm not. Look at the way you chose to get back at me by playing Inspector Doppler. That was just revenge. That's no different from anyone else. Rubbish. You could have revenged yourself in many crude ways. No. You had to resort to a game. Well, I like to pay back in kind. And are you satisfied from it? Is it one set all? By no means. Your game was bigger than mine. Doppler was a tease. You terrified me to death. And that changes you. Once you've accepted death, actually faced the fact that the coat sleeve button, the banister, the nail on your fourth finger are the last things you're ever going to see and then hear the sound of your own death. Things cannot be the same again. I feel like I've been tempered by madness. I stand outside and see myself for the first time without responsibility. Milo, my dear fellow, I, I didn't realize. So, it's my only duty to even our score. You say we're game set and matched, but I don't see it that way. You're being too modest, my lord. In my scoring, we're even. Oh, no, dear boy. You see, there was only one way I was possibly going to make us equals. So I did it. I've killed someone. Killed someone? I murdered someone. Committed murder. You're not serious. I am. What is this? Some new murder game? Yes, but it has a difference. Both the game and murder are real. There's no point in another pretend one, is there? No, none. But I don't like to take advantage of you in this emotional state. It can't wait! All right, all right. We'll play your game. Who did you kill? Your girlfriend, Taya. <laughs> you killed Taya? How can I put it in your words? 
she whose cobalt eyes were the secret forest pools of Finlandia. I closed them. You? I strangled her. Right here on this rug. I strangled her and... I had her first. You forced yourself upon her? No, not forced. She wanted it. You're lying. You can't take me in with a crude game like this. Honestly, Milo, you're in the big league now. I, I give you credit for better sport than this. You'll have all the sport you can stomach in a moment, Andrew. That, I promise you. Really, Milo, I, I think it would when be better if... When I was here if... yesterday, planning the blood and planting the clothes for my Inspector Doppler scene, Taya called by. I strangled her. She was under that freshly dug mount of earth in the garden that Doppler noticed, remember? Was? Do you mean she's not there now? No. I moved her. You moved her? Where to? All in good time, dear boy. It was too easy leaving her there. Too easy for the game you're going to play against the clock. Before the police arrive. The police? Oh, yes. You see, about an hour ago, I called them and asked them to meet me here at ten o'clock tonight. They should be here in about, uh, ten minutes. Yes, yes, I'm sure they will be. Led, no doubt, by intrepid Inspector Doppler? Oh, no. It'll be the real police. Have no fear of that. Detective Sergeant Tarrant is his name. You see... I told him a lot about you, Andrew. I said that I knew you to be an obsessed man who enjoys games playing and considers murder a fine art. Also, that your life's great ambition was to commit a real-life murder even the police couldn't solve. Hiding the body where it couldn't be traced and leave clues linking you to the crime that their lack of intellect would never find. Well, I'm flattered you think so highly of me, Milo. Pretty ingenious. But it won't work. Please, sir, Andrew White can't rest until he's committed a real murder which is going to make fools out of all you coppers. <laughs> Honestly. Tell that to the average desk sergeant and you'll find yourself taken away by the men in white coats. Not so. I told them that if they didn't believe me, they only needed to have a look at your bookcase and house to confirm all I say about your obsessions. Go on. I also told them that two days ago, your girlfriend had come to my house distressed, saying you suspected she had affairs with other men and threatened to kill her. The police believed that? Eventually, yes. They must have watched too much TV. Of course, I told them I had no proof that any harm had been done to her, but I thought I had to report it. Particularly after you phoned me excitedly to say you were about to achieve your life's great ambition. My dear boy, I quite appreciate you have been captivated by the spirit of games playing and the need, as you see it, to get even. But frankly, you are trying too hard to be a big boy too soon. As I shall soon demonstrate. Oh, hello, Joyce. This is Andrew. May I speak to Taya? She what? When was this? Where? Oh, my God. I told you. I killed her yesterday. Now sweat for your life. You have a little over ten minutes before the police arrive. It's your giant brain against their plodding ones. Concealed in this room are two incriminating clues. And as a final expression of contempt for the police, you hid the murder weapon itself. Following so far, dear boy, you bastard. Come now, Andrew. 
It's only a game. So, as I said, three objects. Those you don't find, the police will. I'll also add that they are in plain view, though I have somewhat camouflaged them to make the whole thing more fun. The first object is a crystal bracelet. Not? Yes. I tore it off her wrist. It's inscribed, From Andrew to Taya, a propitiatory offering to a Corellian goddess. All right, all right. I know how it's inscribed. Would you like some help? Yes, damn you. Now, now, no need to be rude. Now then. For any man with half an eye, what stands before him may espy. But optics sharp it needs, I ween, to see what is not to be seen. You said everything was in plain view. Well, it's a paradox, isn't it? I'll get my own back for this, don't worry. Yet I promise you, I'll roast you for this. I'll make you so sorry you ever... Yawn, yawn. Eight minutes, Andrew. Think. Think, I must think it. It's in plain view, yet not to be seen. A visual trick. A propitiatory offering, eh? I'm surprised you know the word. Oh, you underestimate me, Andrew. To propitiate, appease, regaining goodwill. So, what was it you had to propitiate for, I wonder? None of your bloody business. Just for being yourself, I suppose. Just for being cold, torturing Andrew Wyke. Oh, poor Taya. Wonder if all of her jewellery was inscribed with apologies for your bullying. That's a cheap jibe. Mind you. At least you gave her some. Marguerite just had the use of them. I see what you're doing. You're trying to distract me. But you won't succeed. I'll solve your puzzle. Let me think. Optics sharp. It needs to see what is not to be seen. With the naked eye, it's microscopic. You only see a fraction of it. That must be it. Where's my magnifying glass? You won't need the Sherlock Holmes gear, Andrew. The bracelet is full-sized and in full view. Though the detective angle is very good. I wonder how your man, Merrid Dick, would have got on. Merrid you. St. John, Lord, married you. Perhaps he'd have clambered up onto that desk to look at the ceiling, hauling his great ton of port belly after him. <laughs> or perhaps he'd gone straight to the chimney and shoved his fat Father Christmas face right up to it. My God, cried the noble Lord, puking on his pipe and indulging his famed taste for bad puns. This is hardly a suitable place for a gentleman. Will you shut up? <laughs> I won't listen to you. I must think. What are the properties of crystal? It's hard, it's brilliant, it's transparent. Ooh, you're getting warm, Andrew. You look through it and you don't see it. Now, the only place to conceal a transparent thing so as to make it invisible yet keep it in plain view is in another transparent thing like... Yes, in the crystal ware. Suddenly it's clear as crystal. <laughs> I don't need to destroy this, do I? She could have had this here at any time. True. It was only planted so that the police could read the inscription. At least they'd know that your relationship with Taya hadn't always been a happy one. How subtle. What next? The next object is much more damning. The clue is a riddle, which goes as follows. <clears throat> Two brothers we are, great burdens we bear, on which we are bitterly pressed. The truth is to say, we are full all of the day and empty when we go to rest. Oh, I know that. Don't tell me. Full all of the day, empty when we go to rest. It's uh, a pair of shoes. Very good. In this case, one right high-heeled shoe. Size six. The other, which should be obvious to you, is on Taya's body. Oh, my God, poor Taya. 
Yeah, poor tear, eh? Well, that's a bit better. It's the first sign of sorrow you've shown since you heard of her death. That's not true. Mm. You think I don't care about Taya, don't you? But I must save myself. Oh, you're loving it. The thought that you're playing a game for your life is practically giving you an orgasm. Oh, it's pathetic. How dare you? What you see before you is someone using a mighty control to keep terror in check while trying to solve a sadistic and morbid puzzle. Ah, I found it. Very good. Ugh, sorry it's so messy. It's only the earth from Taya's first grave in your garden. Then I shall burn it in the furnace. There. Now there's one thing left, isn't there? The murder weapon, you said? You strangled her, so what with? Let's see. A rope? A belt? A scarf? No, that's not artistic enough. You slept with her, so... Stockings. Was she wearing stockings? It bit into her neck very deeply, Andrew. I had to prise it loose. You sadistic bastard. Now, now. It would be foolish to antagonize me at this stage. Huh. Did you hear that? Hear what? Yes, I thought so. The police are here. C keep them out. Give me one more minute, please. After antagonizing me with remarks like that? Milo, I beg you, please. I just need more time. Hmm. Tell you what. Given you've asked so nicely, I shall stall them. But I can't guarantee for how long. Thank you. Thank you. Best be quick. Remember to take stock of the time, won't you? Take stock of the good time. Yes, take Russian. stock. This is Detective Constable. Take stock. Oh, good evening. The clock! Good evening, sir. <gasps> so, is Mr. Oh, you oh, yes. bastard. Uh, he is. I warned him. He's not Best destroy it. Well, we'd best have a word with him. <sighs> oh, of course. Uh, I'd like to keep coats. Oh, thank God. Thank you. You may be some time. <sighs> right. Come in, gentlemen. Uh, may I introduce Mr. Andrew Wyke? Andrew, may I introduce Detective Sergeant Tarrant and Constable Higgs? Uh, yes, uh, please come in, gentlemen. Or perhaps, should I say, Inspector Plodder and Constable Freshface? What? Thank you, Sergeant. We won't be needing you after all. That's all right, sir. Better be safe than sorry. That's what I say. Good night, sir. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, Constable. Good night, sir. They... What? <laughs> Your face! Aren't you going to ask about Taya? She did call here yesterday looking for you when I was here, setting the Doppler scene. I told her about the trick you'd played on me with the gun. She wasn't a bit surprised. She knows only too well the kind of games you play. The kind of humiliation you enjoy inflicting on people. I said I wanted to play a game to get even with you. And I asked her to help me. I asked her to lend me a stocking, a shoe, and a bracelet. She collaborated with enthusiasm. So did her flatmate, Joyce. Would you like to telephone her? She'll talk to you now. Of course, you don't really have much to say to her, do you? She's not your mistress. She told me you haven't slept together for over a year. She told me 
You were practically impotent. Not at all, in fact, the selector's choice for the next Olympics. <sighs> what are you doing? Taking Marguerite's fur coat. She's not coming back, is she? No. Among other things, she was fed up of living in Hamleys. Hamleys? It's a toy shop in London. Milo. Don't go, please. Don't waste it all, Marguerite. She doesn't appreciate you like I do. You and I are evenly matched. We know what it is to play a game, and that's so rare. Two people coming together who have the courage to spend the little time between the eternal darkness, choking. <laughs> you want me to live here? With you? Why not? Please. I just want someone to play with. No. Please. No. Please. Most people want someone to live with. But you have no life to give anyone. Just tricks. Take a look at yourself, Andrew. Look at your attachment to detective stories. Perhaps you might come to realise that the only place you can inhabit is a dead world. A country house world where colonels die in their studies, where butlers steal the port. It's a world of coldness and class hatred and two-dimensional characters. It's a world where only amateurs win. Where everything is one big puzzle. Forgive me for taking Marguerite to a life where people try to understand. To put it shortly, the detective story is the normal recreation of snobbish, outdated, life-hating, ignoble minds. Now, if you don't mind, I've got Marguerite's coat, and now I'll be going. Let's never see or speak again. The coat? Of course I've got you. <sighs> Andrew, come on. You see, Inspector, I was working at my desk when I heard a noise. I seized my gun and saw the figure of a man carrying my wife's expensive fur coat. What are you going to do, Andrew? Shoot me down? Play that old burglar game again? Yes, that's precisely what I could do. It wouldn't work. Even if you had the guts to go through with it. And why not? Because of what happened when I left here on Friday night. I lurched home, numb and dazed and soiled. I sat up all night in a chair, damaged, contaminated by you and this house. The next morning, I went to the police and told them what happened. One of them, Detective Sergeant Tarrant, yes, he's real, took me into a room and we had a long chat. I didn't think he believed me, even when I showed him the powder bun on my head. But the police might still come. Then why haven't they? I don't know. Maybe they won't. But even if they don't, you can't play your burglar game now. They'd never swallow it. So you see, you've lost. I don't believe one word you're saying. It's the truth. You're lying. Why don't you phone Sergeant Tarrant if you don't believe me? And say what? Please, Sergeant, has Milo Tyndall been in saying I framed him as a burglar and then shot him? I'm not that half-witted. <sighs> Suit yourself. I shall shoot you, Milo. You come here and ask my permission to steal my wife. You pry into my manhood, you lecture me on dead worlds and ignoble minds. And you mock Mary Jew. Well, they're all real bullets this time. I'm going home now, Andrew.
You're a bad liar, Milo, and an uninventive games player. Can you hear me? Then listen to this. Never play the same game three times running. Mr. White, this is the police. Game, set, and match. <laughs> Mr. White, we know you're in there. Mr. White. Game. Set. <laughs> 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 